Diddley has a beat named after him. How cool is that? So in this video, we're gonna try out some Bo Diddley beat variations on the drum set. Coming up. Hi, my name is Kevin Zano, and welcome to Rhythm Notes, a channel with a lot of videos about conga drumming, drum set, and other popular percussion. And if you want free lesson PDFs, subscribe to my newsletter, Rhythm Insider, at rhythminsider.com. You'll get a free gift when you confirm your subscription. In 1955, Bo Diddley performed Hey Bo Diddley on The Ed Sullivan Show. That song used an old rhythm that's been transplanted from Africa and reinvented through many cultural filters. Many of us call it the Bo Diddley beat, but he wasn't alone in his use of what I consider one of the most influential rhythms in popular music over the last century and really throughout the world. The Bo Diddley beat accent pattern is the same rhythm as the 3-2 son clave, which made its way to rhythm and blues via the influence of the ham bone in places like New Orleans. The ham bone goes back to early rhythms performed by African slaves uh, in, in America, keeping the African musical tradition alive and inventing new cultural forms over the centuries. And perhaps you've heard this beat on Faith by George Michael or Magic Carpet Ride by Steppenwolf uh, and, and I Want Candy by Bow Wow Wow, just to name a few. So let's get into some variations on the drum set, starting with the original beat performed live on The Ed Sullivan Show. This groove is mostly the snare drum with snares off and the rack tom. It's hard to hear or see whether Clifton James is playing the kick on all four quarter notes, uh, you know, beats on one and three, or a pattern that follows the accents on the tom groove. So in the following example, try adding kick and hi-hat on, on the half notes to thump out a pulse. Another thing to think about is the swing feel. You can play this beat more straight or more swung. Uh, I like to think of it as uh, it's, it's more of a swing beat that straightens out a bit as you play it faster. You know, likewise, the, the swing opens up when you play it slower. If you're getting value out of this video, hit that like button and please share it with someone who you think will also get value out of it. This next variation of the Bo Diddley beat is more like a march. It reminds me of the kinds of parts you might hear in a New Orleans second line ensemble. If you're having trouble with the flams, play the beat without them. Practice the beat with just the accents and develop your flams separately on the practice pad. If your strokes are not well defined, take away one stick, whether you're left or right, your choice, and play flam accents. You'll notice that the rhythm in each hand is therefore When you define each hand, you're making sure that you give each stroke the energy 
that it requires. You're essentially training your brain to care about all those strokes, in other words. And, and pay particular attention to the flam accent rudiment in the video because this beat, this march uh, variation, requires clear definition of the flam accents and the taps in between. So lastly, uh, at the end there, the, the buzz roll, um, it, could, it could also be an open roll with double strokes. So you could also leave it out or, or play a different fill entirely depending on the phrasing of the song. If you want more information on drumming styles, search Google for rhythm notes and drumming styles, as well as anything else drumming related you might be interested in. This groove is used in a variety of popular styles like blues, funk, rock, and various dance beats, including Latin pop. And there's a lot of room for variation in this example, so I'll dig into some possibilities after I break this one down. Notice that in this variation, I fill in the groove with some ghost notes on the snare drum. This helps add more swing to the feel of the groove. And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about Jeff Picaro when I'm playing this example. Uh, I'm pretty sure Jeff played a Bo Diddley beat variation during a bridge or interlude um, uh, section on Calling Elvis, which is a track off uh, On Every Street, a Dire Straits album that was one of the last, if not the last, big albums that, that Jeff Percaro played on. I know that, you know, Manu Kache came in and, and, and had to finish it. I mean, I mean, wow. I mean, I'm just riffing right now, but there's so many thoughts coming to my mind, you know, that I'll have to just harness later and, and, and do some different videos in the future. Maybe even like a, a Manu and, and Jeff uh, comparison on that album, a deep dive into what they're playing. I mean, they're two very amazing drummers, but they're two very different drummers. like this video and you want to watch more check out this one suggested to you by youtube and check out this one suggested to you by rhythm notes please subscribe so we can help you level up your drumming today and we'll see you in the next video Bye.